Hello, if you have been following my channel, you probably know that I've created a video series about creating a third-person shooter battle royale, but I deleted that videos from the channel because that project was getting too complicated and I was trying to write the whole logic from the scratch for networking, animation, IK, and third-person controller, but I realized it would be better to just use the pre-made packages and that would be less time-consuming and less complicated. So. I'm gonna start a new video series and in this video series I'm gonna create a third-person shooter multiplayer game so to start I just created a folder on my desktop it's an empty folder I'm just gonna create a new unity project and that folder called TPS and I'm gonna choose 3d URP so in this project, I'm going to use netcode for game objects for the networking solution, but I'm also going to use my own custom real-time networking for room creation and matchmaking. Now let's remove this and maybe move this to the settings. Now let's go to the package manager and here in the Unity registry. For a start, let's install netcode for game objects. So here it is, I'm gonna just install that. And next we're going to install animation rigging package. So let's go ahead and do that. Next we need to install input system. Here it is. And after we install the input system, we need to restart the editor. And now I'm gonna go and import the starter asset for third person character controller from Unity Asset Store. I'm also going to import a free weapon model. So. I'm going to start the character controller first. So third person controller has some dependencies, so it's gonna install the cinema machine as well, which we're gonna use. So let's import. Okay, next I'm gonna import the weapon model. So you can choose any model as I mentioned. So let's import. So I'm gonna create a folder and name it packages. And let's move the weapon to the packages folder. Now, if we take a look at the weapon, the material do not have the URP shader. So let's change that. I'm going to change it to universal render pipeline lit. And for the base map, I'm just going to choose the texture. So we also need a bunch of animations. For the animation, I'm just going to use Mixamo website. It does have acceptable animations, but you don't have to use Mixamo. You can use your own animations. For this, I'm just going to use shooter pack animations. I'm also going to download four different animations for idle, walking, running, and sprinting for when you do have a weapon in hand, but you're not aiming it like this animation you see here so that's four more animations and also i am going to get an additional animation for sprinting unarmed like this one you can just go ahead and download any animation you want just make sure to put it on fpx for unity and then download it so i've already downloaded all the animations i need so i'm gonna import them into my project so here they are inside the clips folder make sure when you download an animation from mixamo inside the rig put it on humanoid and apply the changes also put the root transform rotation based upon original and check the loop pose if the animation is in a loop so that's everything we need now let me go to the third person controller scenes and open this default scene as you can see if i play this we have a character controller by default it's walking but when i hold the shift key it starts running i can jump around and that's basically is everything you can do but i want running for default and when we hold the shift key it starts sprinting so let's start from there i'm gonna stop this and i'm gonna select my player and here my third person controller script i'm gonna open that so we have move speed and sprint speed here. I am going to add a run speed. So this move speed, I'm going to rename it to walk speed. So now we have three different speed for our player. Now, if I get down here in the update function, so before we do the move function, if I go to the move function, you'll see that there is a target speed here. Let's just cut this. I don't want to determine the speed inside the move anymore. So I'm going to go up here in the update and before the move, I'm going to set the speed here. Let's actually make this into a variable. So I'm going to create a variable up here, name it 
private float target speed so that's our variable now and here instead of creating a new variable I'm just gonna say target speed and by default it is going to be run speed and I'm going to create another variable here name it walking it's gonna be of type boolean and let's go back to the update function now here I'm gonna say if input dot sprint target speed equals to sprint speed and else if we are walking target speed equals to walk speed let's also create a new variable I'm gonna name it speed animation multiplier and we're gonna use this in the animator so let's go ahead and say Set that value as well here I'm gonna add an else so when we are sprinting we're gonna set the animator value to 3 for walking it's gonna be 1 and otherwise we're running which is going to be 2 now if we go ahead and take a look at the animator on our character controller you see that inside the parameters we have speed and the animation is going to be determined based on that speed here so if the speed is zero we're gonna play the idle if it is two we're gonna play walk and if it's six we're gonna play run so we're gonna change the whole thing so first of all let's create a sub state machine and I'm just gonna drag everything inside this now let's open this and I'm not gonna change any of the transitions so let's just open idle walk run so I'm going to create another float and name it armed so basically we're gonna play different animations for when you are armed and when you are not armed so inside this blend tree I'm gonna add a new blend tree so basically I'm gonna add two blend trees and here instead of speed I'm gonna choose armed on the first blend tree we're gonna choose speed and add the motion fields here so for the first motion field I'm gonna choose the idle here it is for the second one I choose walk let's take a look here is the run animation let's go back to our motion field and assign the run and we also need a sprint which I'm gonna use the clip I downloaded from Mixamo so I'm gonna use sprint as well and let's uncheck this this is gonna be 0 1 2 3 the same values we chose in our code here the speed animation multiplier so we're gonna use those values now we can go ahead and delete these motion fields here we go so if the value of armed is zero then we are unarmed if it is one then we are armed so here the main blend tree is gonna be decided based on armed zero unarmed one armed so let's go to zero which is unarmed and I'm gonna name this unarmed and this one armed now we set the values of unarmed and we're gonna set the values of armed later now let's go back to the code we need to apply this speed animation multiplier to our animator if we go to our move script here it is inside the move script you see an animation blend so this animation blend is gonna be put inside the speed variable here right now by default it's gonna use target speed but right now we don't want to use target speed anymore instead we're gonna use the speed animation multiplier now this works but there's a problem we don't want this animation multiplier to have a value if we are not moving so if we take a look here you see that if input that move equals to vector to zero the target speed is going to be zero so I'm gonna copy that line and bring it here I am going to say if input equals to vector to zero I'm gonna put question mark then it is going to be zero otherwise we're gonna use speed animation multiplier now if I save this and go back to unity if I play this by default we are running and if I hold the shift it's gonna start sprinting so let's also set up the walking I'm going to go to my starter assets here in the input starter assets input let's add another input action I'm gonna duplicate jump so that's gonna be walk 
and I'm going to use keyboard. So let's choose a key for it. I'm gonna use this one. So that's for the walking. So whenever I press that key, the walk is gonna be toggled. While we are here, let's actually add other inputs. So for example, I am going to duplicate this sprint and name it aim and I'm gonna choose mouse right button. Here it is. And let's duplicate this again and name it shoot. And for this one, we are going to use mouse left button. So I am going to create a button for reload as well. I'm gonna copy the jump for it. Duplicate, it's gonna be reload. And for the reload, I am going to use keyboard R. By the way, you could set up the gamepad or any other layout as you want. I'm just gonna do the keyboard. Let's save this. So we're not done yet. We still need to go to the starter assets inputs. That's a script right here. So here we need to add the Boolean value of those inputs. So I'm gonna add aim, shoot, walk, and reload. Now let's get down here. Let's copy on move. And I am going to add the same function for all four values. So for example, on aim, and here I'm gonna say aim input. That's a function we need to create. And because aim is like a jump button. Let's actually go and look at the jump. You see that value is pressed is passing. So here we're gonna pass value is pressed. And let's go and create aim input as well. So as you can see, we need to create a Boolean. So I'm gonna say aim input new aim state. So that's it and this is going to be aim. While we are here, let's create it for other ones as well. This is gonna be shoot input, new shoot state. And this is going to be shoot. Let's also create it for reload. New reload state and reload. And let's do this for walk as well. Walk input, new walk state, and this is gonna be walk. Now if we go up here, we create an on aim. Let's also create on shoot. So it's gonna be shoot input, and let's create it for reload and walk on walk and walk input on reload and reload input so that's our input let's save this and if i go back to the third person controller inside the update function right over here i'm gonna say if input.walk is pressed make input.walk false and after that, reverse the walking boolean. So let's save this. If I go back to the editor and play, by default, we are running. If I hit the walk input, now we are walking and I can switch between walking and running. And when I hold shift, it starts sprinting. So that's pretty much our unarmed situation. Now let's create the armed situation. To do that, let's go back to the third person controller. Up here, I'm just gonna create an Boolean called armed. This is temporarily, of course. Let's make it serialized field. We're gonna change that later. But for now, let's go back to the update function. And here I am going to say animator set float armed. So if we are armed, we're gonna pass one F and if we are not armed, we're gonna pass zero. So that's on the code, let's go to the Unity. So in the animator, I'm gonna create another float parameter, call it aimed. So if we are armed here, we're gonna have two different blend threes. So they're gonna be determined based on the value of aimed. So if we are aimed, we're gonna have one blend three. If we are not aimed, we're gonna have another one. The value is going to be zero and one. So this is gonna be not aimed. 
and this is going to be aimed. So we're going to handle aimed later. For now, let's handle not aimed. So not aimed is going to be determined based on speed. So let's create the motion fields for it. And the same way for unarmed, this is going to be 3, 2, 1, and 0. If you take a look at unarmed, you see that the animations do not have weapon in the character hand. So if I change the speed, it's going to do this. But for armed, but not aimed, we need different animation. I downloaded these animations from Miximo. The first one is armed. So this is the animation. And also for running and uh, sprinting and walking with weapon in the hand. So if you want to download them, this is the sprint. If we take a look at this, this is going to be idle. And this is running. And I think walking is in another page, but you can find it. So those are the animations. I am going to assign them. So the first one. Here it is. The second one is going to be walk. And the other one is running. And the last one is sprint. So here we go. And if we take a look at this, you see that if I change the value, it's going to start changing its speed. But as you can see, the weapon is inside the character hand. Now, if I go to the game let's play focused i'm gonna choose the player that is the boolean for armed as you can see we created the boolean here now let's play this for now it's unarmed so i can run and walk around now if i check this you see it is going to change into having weapon in the hand now i'm running i'm walking i can even sprint and this is the idol now let's actually put a weapon in the character hand to make it more interesting. Let's go to the skeleton in the right shoulder. I am going to create an empty game object inside the right hand of the character. I'm going to name it weapon holder. So for our weapon, let's actually collapse that. Let's create an empty game object. I'm going to choose a name for it. Let's reset. We'll bring it here. And if I go to my packages, this is weapon. So I'm going to bring it here under that empty game object. And as you can see, here it is. Let's actually remove the animator. We don't need that. And I'm just going to drag this weapon under our weapon holder. And if I reset this, we can rotate it to adjust its position. Here we go. You can play around with the position. To make it look better. So I think this is good. Okay. Now if I play the game you see here it is and if I select my player and go to the armed you see here it is my player has a weapon in hand and if I hit the walk button it's gonna play different animation for walking running and sprinting now I'm gonna finish the video right here in the next video I'm gonna start on aiming I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.